Rebel Calm. Hello. Welcome, my dear world. From Dhaka, Bangladesh, this is Munira Sultana Poppy welcoming everyone on live in our global classroom today. Today we have got international leaders, educators, intellectuals. Of course, as you can see, we have Ms. Rania Lampo, ma'am, from Greece. Well, warm welcome, ma'am. And Ms. Soares from Dubai and Pakistan, warm welcome. Please accept our gratitude. And here we have Charles Otieno from Kenya, warm welcome advocate. Dr. Nupur Dhamija, Supreme Court of India. She has connected herself from India. Warm welcome. Everyone will deliver their great speech for 15 minutes on their mentioned topics. And I welcome and please help our dearest Rania Lampo ma'am to educate the world to empower our global community. I'm requesting my dearest Honorable Rania Lampo ma'am from Greece to please inaugurate this global classroom. Thank you, ma'am, for joining us. Please uh, deliver your kind speech, dearest Rania Lampo ma'am. Thank you. Greetings from Greece. I'm very, very honored and very excited to be invited by Dr. Monira in this uh, wonderful uh, session today. And uh, I would like first to convey my uh, warm appreciation for the launch of Global Educational Institute. And I also would like to congratulate Dr. Monira on this uh, brand new wonderful venture that aims to offer important global classrooms and very informative sessions in order to help uh, transform education, but also training, providing systems, and empower educators. Is it possible for um, uh, other speakers to mute their microphones? Because um, I have, yes. I have done that. Okay. So according to an old English proverb, there is a great deal of unmapped country within us. In part, creative thinking, is about exploring and fathering an unknown hinterland. The real magic of discovery lies not in seeking new landscapes, but in having new eyes. The creative process is much more like a seed being implanted, infusing with another already present, which then grows by form of accretion. Uh, creativity is a crucial skill in the development of innovative ideas. Without it, an organization or a society is likely to lack the impetus needed to progress and move forward. Creativity is considered as one of the most in demand of skills that companies are looking, highlighting how the skill is thought of as being a natural gift that is limited to certain disciplines. And often this leads to being neglected in some fields of study. However, creativity can be taught and uh, uh, academic institutions have a critical role to play in producing uh, students, graduates that can utilize the skill in the workplace. Teaching creativity, for instance, at university is not only a key ingredient in increasing the employability of graduates, it can also play a crucial role in making students more skilled. Creativity is about uh, uh, applying and interpreting knowledge in an innovative, unique way. In order to do so, students must understand, of course, the content and have the confidence to provide and then uh, their own unique take on it. And why creative thinking is important? Because it brings us beyond words. It allows explanation, exploration, and communication beyond the limitation of words. It engages the mind, frees the mind in a way that enables a person to absorb knowledge more easily and it makes processing learning uh, more efficient. It enables uh, alternative ways of thinking. It unblocks all patterns or habits of thinking. So it allows uh, more no linear thinking. It enables empathy because it connects us uh, to ourselves. It opens our hearts and doors to our mind. It brings us to hidden parts of ourselves. It allows recognitions of uniqueness. 
And also it can help uh, draw out what is already there within hidden talents and inner capacities can emerge. So creative participation uh, with creativity nurtures a sense of togetherness. And creativity also challenges. It can connect reflection with action. It connects us to different cultures and subcultures. It nurtures uh, confidence. It instills curiosity. It can help us capture ideas, thoughts, and visions about the world, stimulates, motivates, engages different learning styles, inspires collective thinking. Creative thinking and um, creativity are not quite the same thing. Creative thinking leads you to the new idea. And creativity includes actually bringing it into existence. To give something form, that means to bring an idea actually into existence requires a range of skills and knowledge beyond the more cerebral ones. The artist is an obvious case in point. For instance, Leonardo da Vinci may have lain in bed in his darkened chamber, going over again his imagination, his observations of the previous day in various ideas conceived by ingenious speculation. But when he awoke next morning and went into his studio, he had the skill to make models, to draw and paint with artisanship acquired over a lifetime. So he may not have translated all his original ideas into existence in the cases of the helicopter or the submarine, the technology was lacking then, but he could certainly express his ideas in detailed drawings. One possible relationship between the concepts of creative and creativity suggested by um, dividing them into distinct phases, thinking precedes making, but this of course is not always uh, the truth. Anyway, you need to have to work out an original idea. The process of working it out, the idea may be, ideas may be developed, adopted, changed. New ideas or materials will be added to the melting pot. Programs are, uh, programs are made in the making. And remember that creativity isn't inherent. You have to hone it. So here today, during this session, we will have a chance to explore different strategies about how to foster creativity and become eventually a creative genius. Thank you uh, very much for your attention. Thank you so much, uh, my dearest Honorable Rani Lempo, ma'am. Can I please connect our dearest Daphne Soares, ma'am, for her great delivery, please? Daphne Soares, ma'am, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, sure, I can hear you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, my topic is on jealousy and cost of depression. A very much needed topic in today's times in whatever area you are, whether in the workplace or the classroom. This is something that is commonly happens amongst human beings and it is perfectly okay to happen as long as it's not, uh, you know, going to a very high level that can badly affect, impact the other person. Uh, it's a destructive kind of an emotion and we have to really be very cautious how we are responding to this. Uh, sometimes people uh, feel a jealousy with their colleagues because that person is getting a better position, a better salary or favorited in their company or in their classroom by the head, whoever's responsible. Another cause of uh, jealousy is the closer to envy. Because when we move to envy and jealousy, it becomes is better. That means it's becoming more worse, right? Sometimes people find that it's affected in the workplace through the salaries because of uh, wages are garnished with different things. And one colleague sees that their take home salary is much more lesser than what is predicted in the figures, right? So a jealousy can also be taken in a positive way that it could help you to strive more to work harder and to improve yourself. But when it's affecting you badly and putting you down in your you know, uh, emotions of really working and struggling and trying to improve hard, that's where you need to really pay much attention. Now, what are the signs of jealousy? One is belittling other people's accomplishments. Many times we see, you know, people looking down on the accomplishment. If you have sh share your award, maybe online, they say, oh, that's a common thing. Even I could do it. Who cares about this? This is one sign that shows that you have a negative attitude uh, within yourself. The next is you start ignoring people's ideas. You don't want to listen to what the next person is saying. Refusing to speak to someone. We start becoming closed up 
and thinking that we are the rightest and that all knowledgeable, we don't need to listen to anybody. Anyone who doesn't want to listen to another, that's the key step to your failure. You need to know that you are going to go on the decline because you can have to be a lifelong learner and ready to listen to people and ready to take also correction from seniors and people of your same level. Saying nothing when a colleague is congratulated is also some sign of the next person having a jealousy streak in them. You would not want to wish them good for it. Now, how do we deal with other people's jealousy? So we need to start being polite and behave civilly. We need to be kind to that person, no matter what it is. You don't lose your values and ethics, what you have in life. Offer help and support if they let you. You can always say, if they say, no, it's fine. You can just suggest something, right? And then try not to take it personally. When people pass remarks, the thing is that we take it very personally. If someone says, oh, that, you know, report was not good. It was not uh, presented well. Your presentation was not good. You can improve, take it in a positive sense and find a way to grow with it, okay? Ignore the jealous behavior. The more you're uh, paying attention to it, you are going to only really upset your own life. All right, by sitting and thinking, oh, I'm good for nothing. I cannot speak. I cannot do this. No, if there's an error, listen to what the next person has said and find a way how you are going to improve it, right? We find jealousy a lot. Many times we feel that, you know, the teacher, if it's in the classroom or in the workplace, the manager likes a certain person. So that person will get the better hand. You try your best and do your best. But make sure that you take care of your mind. Everything starts with what's happening in your brain. And this can have very bad impacts once you start belittling yourself because someone has said either about your complexion because they are jealous of maybe your hair is very beautiful, your features are good. And they start saying, oh, you've got this hair. You don't look good. Look at your color. I'm, you know, look, I'm more fairer than you or I'm more darker than you. You do not let those words affect you. You have to really accept yourself. You have to use positive affirmations for yourself. And you must remind yourself that not all fingers are equal, right? Even if that person is saying, is that person genuinely saying this to me? And in what way is it affecting my performance? Because not everything comes as truth. And there is a, we are created with this sensitivity where we can sense when somebody saying it in a positive, in our favor or against us, right? Now, the causes of all this jealousy that could happen. First, it, if the person says it, you need to ignore it. If you are getting affected by that, start with a method, which I would recommend to you to use positive affirmations. It should be used by everyone. Create, go out today and create five affirmations for yourself and remind yourself what good po points do you see in yourself. Are you hardworking? Are you pretty? Are you handsome? Are you talented? You have to remind yourself of those things. Don't let other people's words upset you that no, you are useless. You are not smart. You're a waste of time and everything because this is what's going to really, really upset you very, very much, okay? Once you have created that uh, positive affirmations and you are reminding yourself you have taken care of your mind, then listen and work. Use all those jealousy things which are coming from your colleagues or classmates as something to make you and not break you. Use it as a stepping stone. If today, like say, I tell Ma'am Bonira, you know, you're sitting on a very high chair. Why should she get upset? Maybe she looks okay. Can I get a little lower? What, why is it affecting? Am I being cut on the camera? What is wrong? Go and explore. Don't, you don't sit out sobbing. Oh my God, I was so high on a chair. You know, she thought I was a high horse and this and that. You are yourself belittling yourself. When you start crushing yourself, the next person cannot do anything. And people like to see the fun. Don't think, expect people to put their arms around you and say, oh, darling, I love you. Don't cry and I care for you. You will very rarely get that in your classroom or in your workplace. So always work on the positivity. Also, people, I'm not encouraging those who are jealous of others. 
Why are you jealous? What is the driving force? It's because you think you are useless and incapable. That's why you're jealous of the other. Prove yourself. Take it as a challenge that yes, I can climb the steps higher and higher and I can do it. And do remember there's a very bad consequence of jealousy, either accepting it from others or passing it on others. Do you realize the damage you are creating for that person? We are here to help people. We are not here to destroy people. Remember, life is beautiful. No one has seen God. We see God in our neighbor. So if you truly love God and if you really can try to see him in your neighbor, how can you share love? By saying I love God is not love. Or by just saying all your prayers, or uh, say a hundred times a day does not say that it proves that your you, faith has to be in action. How are you proving it to your neighbor? How are you helping? Because the consequences of jealousy can lead the next person into depression. And also the person who's uh, being jealous of another person, depression can affect both the jealous and the one who is being you know, jealous of. Right, Because if that affects the person negatively, the person goes into depression. What happens with depression is we have chemicals in our brain, which really brings our levels of happiness down. That is why we commonly see people even in schools being sent to the uh, counselor. Then you end up with a psychiatrist yes. and with controlled drugs. Why do you need all this? Because the chemicals of your brain have got here and there. And I they should not come as a surprise, but I tell you, depression is the worst thing because slowly, slowly, that is slow poison to nothing else but death. You are sending someone to death. Why do you want to be the instrument for the evil one to kill somebody, to take their life away? Is that what you want? Is that what your faith teaches you? No, it does not. And you have to be very clear on this. Do not try to fall into depression. When you go into negative thoughts, you look down on yourself and others, you will come into a depression. And this you will see that you will start slowly closing down. You want to be on your own. You don't want to listen to others. You do not want to talk to others. These are all positive uh, signs of you entering into the dangerous phase of depression. This is one of the root causes why people are nowadays taking their life. The root cause of suicide amongst all age groups. It's simply because of depression and this has been proved by medical tests and everything. So you have to avoid going into depression. Now, what steps I give you, I would like you to follow that on a regular basis. So you make sure that the chemicals in your brain of dopamine is not falling down and you live with the happiness chemicals and it's not difficult. And avoid even these devices that you're using. Sad with the pandemic, we are so much on the devices, but take time to interact with nature, to go out, to talk to people, not only looking at a flat screen 24 seven. Now, what are you going to do? As I mentioned earlier, you're going to definitely be uh, having words of affirmation for yourself, write it out, fix it on the first place you will see in the morning. Maybe the wall uh, of your bedroom, or the washroom, fix these affirmations and read it every single day to yourself, okay? Second thing, you need, you can uh, increase your happiness level by simply using a pen. And that is what people, we, if you remember when we were kids, we commonly did this of putting this pen on our lip. It's falling down, you need to learn to balance this. I don't know, Munira still remembers her, her baby days when she did all this. We used to enjoy when the teacher was teaching. But you know something? This really is an easy way to get your dopamine levels. Up. Rather than getting going into depression, you'll get happiness coming up because you are doing this. Do this for about three minutes every day. You will have the happiness level for people who are living in hot countries that are closed who do not enjoy sunlight, the greenery and everything. And remind yourself that you are good and everything is possible with 
you. It's nothing that you cannot do. Nowadays, we have the arguments of racism and different competitions. We can do this. Like now, if I compete myself with Ma'am Munira, I think I'm closing my uh, call and I'm going away because she's got fantastic awards. I can't even count those awards. I'm not at a level, but I'm happy with myself because I know where I am. I'm doing amazingly great. And I keep reminding myself, if I really love Monira, why don't I try to follow in her footsteps? By being jealous of her, what will I gain? I will only go into depression and want to kill myself. What good do I do? So success comes by you. You can change your situation. If you are jealous of somebody, use that as a positive thing to find out why am I jealous? Is that person like, well, I'm you, sorry, ma'am, Monira, but I'm just using you as my target today. You've no got problem, beautiful please. hair. Now, if you see, I've got, I've got mixed colors of hair. I like to color my hair in different colors. She's got beautiful, longer hair, black hair. Am I going to sit down and cry? Oh my God, she's so slim. She's wearing a coat. Oh, she's this. Oh, she's okay. If I like the way she dresses up, I like her hair. Why can't I reach that place? Why don't I use her as my role model? So start turning jealousy over the other way and use it as that person or that thing as your model or your target to reach to your goal. And I tell you, you can be successful and you will do it with keeping that goal that I will reach. And I will one day be at that place. But you know, the problem is that when I try to catch Ma'am Munira and I reach her position, she will be higher ahead. So she's all the time motivating me. She doesn't give me time to rest. But it's, that's the key to my success. Look at the person, have them as a role model, turn it the other way, encourage them and encourage yourself. People are ready to help. So you can, depression is in your hands. And this I'm sharing, not only that I am a life coach, I'm also a counselor. And this uh, pen thing that I've given you, this is one of the therapies that we have clearly been taught, which really helps try it out. Thank you and over to Ma'am Munira again. Thank you so much. I'm very sorry that I'm facing here some technical difficulty in my computer today. My internet connection is unstable. I'm really sorry for that. I'll check that whether all of your conversation uh, is uh, recorded already. I'm streaming on live. I'm really sorry for my <laughs> network connection. And that's why you were hearing that recording is being processed or something. I'm so yes. sorry, my dearest. And wonderful marvelous very glorious awesome our dearest Daphne source today you are so beautiful both in and out and I love to hear from you uh, so can I please welcome my next honorable guest is from Kenya Mr. Charles Otieno Otieno, I'm sorry if I didn't pronounce you <laughs> correctly. Can I invite okay. you for your great speech, please, Mr. Charles? Over okay, to you. Okay, thank you. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, please. Okay, thank you very much. I'm Charles Otieno from Kenya, as you, you said. I'm a talent manager, a mentor, and a motivator at the same time. My topic is on uh, why institutions are not uh, working on talents and abilities. I mostly want to focus on uh, Kenya about talent management, especially in the learning institutions, that is uh, uh, higher education and lower education, or uh, all, all level and A levels. Uh, first of all, in Kenya, they perceive talent management as a waste of time. Yes, uh, they, we, 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 we are somehow inclined to a white and blue collar jobs so that uh, we think that, or our seniors think that uh, having a talent or doing performing arts, football, that is a waste of talent and you must be an engineer, a doctor, an accountant to be a person in the society. Uh, most, of, uh, most of the times in uh, my line of duty, I've encountered challenges and obstacles. For example, as a parent comes and asks you, uh, how are you, sir? What, what do you do for a living? Then I'm, I'm a performing artist. What is that? Is that a job? No, go find something else better to do. 
So that is one main thing that uh, hinders our talent management in our country. And I believe we can work on that. We are trying our level best. Uh, again, in a, the learning institutions, uh, we lack uh, good infrastructures. Our governments or governments is really letting us down in terms of infrastructures. Because for example, me, I did film theater. That is what I teach in the institutions mostly for almost 10 years now. But in fact, infrastructures are not there. They are, not, they are in bad condition, in poor conditions, unless you are in a private institution, which tries their level best to do that. Uh, another thing, there are those, these myths, myths and uh, beliefs that anybody in the arts industry is a drug addict, is a hooligan, is someone who doesn't have a future. But in real sense, uh, with the talent or in the arts industry or being an actor or an actress or a film producer, you can turn an economy of a country or the whole continent upside down to even a triple digit. Those are the kind of obstacles we face uh, as we try to mentor and develop the talents of these young, beautiful girls and boys in our institutions. Though we are not deterred from that. We are still pre pressing on. We are still going, we want to do it better than we found it. Though our forefathers were not into, e into it, but we are giving it our best. Another thing is parenting. You know, most of our parents believe that uh, for you to be successful in the society, you must be a teacher, you must be a doctor, you must be an engineer. Now, imagine a situation whereby you are coming from school, you are going home, tell your parent that dad, mom, I want to, I want to be a, an actor. I want to be like Ramsey Noah. I want to be like Trevor Noah in the future. <laughs> You'll be greeted or be welcomed with a very hot slap. We believe, our, our parents believed that. There's some things are not for us. They, they believe that uh, arts in Uh, Mr. Charles is here. Mr. Charles, I cannot see him, uh, maybe for network connection. So uh, can you hear me, my dearest leaders? Daphne, ma'am, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. So I want to connect our next uh, guest right now uh, as Mr. Charles had some network issue. Uh, is Mr. Miss, uh, sorry, advocate Dr. Nupur is available right now? Advocate Nupur, are you available? Yes, yeah, I'm available. Good evening, okay. Yeah, Miss, please carry on. I have spotlighted you. Advocate Nupur Dhameja, are you available to I deliver want... your speech? Uh, maybe some network issue. Now, uh, good evening, good afternoon, uh, good morning to all respected members. Uh, we are uh, talking about, uh, today we are talking about uh, uh, education. 
एम्पावरमेंट एम्पावरमेंट एजुकेशन एजुकेशन इज माइल स्टोन ऑफ वुमेन एम्पावरमेंट बिकॉज it enables them to respond to the challenges comfort the traditional role and change their life literacy rate in india we are talking about literacy rate literacy rate in india have risen sharply to 18.3% in 1951 to 74.04% in 2011 2011 in which enrollment of women in education have also risen sharply 7% to 65% 46% now i'm so sorry uh, maybe again disconnected so sorry to see that so uh, i'm really requesting uh, rania lampo ma'am are you available right now please i'm so sorry that today network connection is un <laughs> unbelievable unbelievably disturbing today rania lampo uh, ma'am please uh, Mm-hmm. Do I want to ask I'm, you? Uh, my my inauguration talk was done or not? Yeah, it was uh, streamed live, uh, and uh, I will check for the recording purpose from Zoom software. I will of course check. Right at this moment, network connection is not really stable here in Dhaka at my place. So, uh, uh, but, were you able but, to hear me or not? Were you able to hear me? Yes, at yes, first? of course. Yes. Okay. uh can you please share your uh, kind of speech ma'am okay my topic uh okay yes. today uh, we're going to explore uh, the road map to become a creative uh, genius the importance of uh, creative thinking uh, today it's uh, significant because in your profession or sphere of work you will have a competitive advantage if you develop your ability to come up with new ideas In your personal life, too, creative thinking can lead you into new paths of creative activity. It can enrich your life. Creativity is the faculty of mind and spirit that enables us to bring into existence, uh, ostensibly out of nothing, something of use, order, beauty, or significance. As the old saying uh, goes, "He is most original who adapts from the most sources." that means that you will be creative when you start seeing or making connections between ideas that appear to others to be far apart the wider the apart the greater the degree of creative thinking is involved very important curiosity the most important thing is not to stop questioning Albert Einstein said that he said also i have no exceptional talents other than a passionate curiosity curiosity has its own reason for existing you can contemplate the mysteries of eternity of life the marvelous structure of reality so it is enough if you try to comprehend a little of this mystery every day such curiosity should be the appetite of the intellect creative thinkers have this because they need to take information from many different sources uh, please um, unmute uh, your microphone okay thank you uh, so um the importance of having an open mind and a degree of curiosity stands out clearly you have to constantly ask yourself questions about what is happening around us and be ready for surprising answers one of the prime aids of education is to develop such an inquisitive mind to children the whole art of teaching is only the art of awakening the natural curiosity of young minds for the purpose of satisfying afterwards keep your eyes uh, your eyes open it may seem odd to think of painting a picture as a means of getting an idea of your mind but for the artist the act of careful analytical observation is only part of the story ideas and emotions are fused into the paint in the heat of inspiration 
what the artist knows and feels is married to what he or she sees, and the picture is the child of that union. Painting is a blind man's profession, said Picasso. He paints not what he sees, but what he feels, what he tells himself about what he has seen. Of course, an observation made through his, uh, the eyes will undergo transformation to varying degrees in the creative mind as it is combined with other elements into a new idea. And remember that observation is a skill. Sherlock Holmes in a film uh, says to his assistant, uh, Dr. Watson, you see, but you do not observe. At the lowest level, observation implies the ability to see what is actually in front of you. And as scientists know, this is not as easy as it sounds. It is almost impossible to be totally objective. We tend to see what we know already and thus uh, uh, leave some creative possibilities. Our minds are programmed to notice certain things rather than others, not least by our particular interests. A botanist, for instance, uh, will be likely to notice plants. If we see uh, things or uh, people repeatedly, we hardly observe them at all, unless there's some change from the familiar or predictable, some deviation from the norm which forces itself upon attention. So one of the best forms of training and observation, I think is drawing or sketching and the ability to be uh, careful, analytical and honest attention to what you see is uh, essential. If you do not notice and observe, you will not think. Observation implies attempting to see a person, an object or scene as you have never seen before in your life. And what uh, really teaches us, it has been said, is not experience, but it's observation. The act of observation is not complete until you have recorded what you have seen, thereby helping to commit it to memory. And observation capitalizes also inspiration. Sometimes a bystander may uh, perhaps see more of the game than uh, he who plays it. Um, and another thing is that they need to listen, uh, another uh, tip for creativity, listen for ideas. Poor listening ability is a common uh, affliction, but creative thinkers do not suffer from it. So what constitutes a good listener? First, a good listener will have curiosity that uh, all desire to uh, learn, uh, all essential desire to learn. And that requires a degree uh, of having an open mind. Uh, if you think you know it all, or at least if you believe you know more than the person to whom you are talking, you are hardly inclined to listen. The act of comprehension should come before the process of analysis and evaluation. A good listener is creative in the sense that he or she draws the best out of you. Uh, for instance, all professional musicians will tell you that the audience plays a vital part in the performance. So a childlike curiosity and open mind backed up by sharp analytical skills and sensitive judgment are essential prerequisites for being a good listener. Your priority must always be to achieve grasp of the nature and status of what is being said to you. So ask the questions to elicit the full meaning. Understanding comes before evaluation, so listen for ideas. Another important thing is reading, reading to generate uh, new ideas for creativity. For many people, reading and uh, research is more a device for avoiding thought rather than as a need to it. But reading for diversion or entertainment or reading merely for information is different from reading for idea generation. And what kinds of reading will develop your creative imagination? The power of a good book is in the intimate relationship of author and reader. It is a transaction that takes place in solitude. It invites you to think for yourself about some subject away from the context of other people. The author should be able to lead you to nourishing food or refreshing water. And though he or she cannot make you drink, he or she provides you with plenty of encouragement to do so. These almost unique conditions of inner dialogue enable a good book to reach deep into your consciousness. Narth is, uh, is worth reading that does not require an alert mind, open and eager uh, to learn. Books are storehouses of ideas, thoughts, facts, opinions, description, information, and dreams. Some of these um, may connect to your present or future interest as a thinker. So reading is to the mind what exercise is to the body. Um, so the real here uh, obj object of education is to take you to the condition of continuously asking questions through reading. 
So uh, reading furnishes the mind only with materials of knowledge. It is thinking that makes what we read uh, ours, as John Locke uh, said. Another important uh, thing is what uh, I call the depth, uh, depth mind. The fact that the unconscious mind plays a part in decision making, problem solving, and creative thinking is important. Uh, most of us have experienced the such products uh, of, uh, for instance, uh, we call intuition or immediate perceptions of the mind without reasoning, hunches or premonitions. For creative thinking, so these uh, premonitions or inklings um, uh, are especially important. That means that maybe signals that they are on the right track. It doesn't require prophetic powers or extrasensory perception. It's just uh, uh, that uh, uh, at this point, you try to interpret natural signs, picking up hints that invade your senses below uh, the conscious threshold and piece together information in the shape of guesses, hints, or clues. Uh, sometimes, for instance, there may be a feeling of pleasure or excitement that precedes discovery, but again indicates that one is going in the right direction. Another important thing is emotion. Psychologists take, uh, tend to make better use of uh, what I said before, depth mind, uh, and divide the human mind into cognitive and affective feelings, emotional desire. In practice, thinking and feeling and willing are almost interrelated and indistinguish uh, indistinguishable. Uh, so creative people tend to have uh, usually a strong emotional investment in their work. Another thing is that you should not wait for inspiration. Creative work, it is unwise to wait for the right mood. Thomas Edison, inventor of the electric light bulb, among many other things, gave a celebrated definition of genius. He said that 1% is inspiration and 99% is perspiration. Creative thinking, paradoxically, is for 99 hours out of every 100, not every, uh, very creative. It is endlessly varied combinations of analyzing, synthesizing, imagining, and valuing. The raw materials are sifted, judged, adapted, altered, and glued together in different ways. So something more than uh, intelligence is needed that lies beyond the willingness to start work uh, without uh, tearing for inspiration to keep at it a day uh, in and day out. You need also a, a particular kind of uh, sensitivity. Um, and uh, uh, spiritual eye, your spiritual eye may trace some delicate motion in your deeper mind. So do not wait for inspiration uh, inspiration is a companion that will appear beside you on certain stretches of the road. The intellect has little to do on the road to discovery, said Einstein. There comes a leap in consciousness. You can call it uh, or intuition, what you will uh, call it. The solution comes to you and you don't know how or why. So develop an inner sensitivity or awareness so that your spiritual eyes and ears are open to the slightest movement or suggestion from outside or inside from above or uh, which hints at the way forward. So listen to your uh, intuition and you cannot uh, quite control, of course, the process that leads to genuine creative work, but having the right attitude of expectancy together with a measure of hope and confidence certainly seems to pay off. Another important um, tip is that uh, you need to sharpen your analytical skills in order to be creative because the germination of original ideas passes through four phases, preparation, incubation, illumination, and verification. The first characteristic of original thinking in a wide spectrum of fields is the period of intense application of immersion in a particular problem, question, or issue. And it is followed by a period when conscious attention is switched away from the topic either by accident or design, which is the incubation phase. Sometimes there follows a sudden flash or insight or intuition, illumination, followed by a period where the idea is subject to critical test and then modified, which is the verification stage. And um, with creativity, also another thing is that we can use what we call the stepping stones of analogy. With, we, uh, with creativity, we start uh, with uh, what already exists. We recognize creativity where the artist or thinker or genius have transformed the materials at hand into a new creation of uh, enduring value. Uh, you will be creative when you start seeing or making connections between ideas that have already existed. So, um, 
I invent nothing, I rediscover. Uh, because you can put yourself into the issues of an inventor. You have become dissatisfied with the solution to some existing problem or daily. So you are casting uh, your mind about uh, ideas, something occurs to you, possibly suggested by reading about other people's attempts in the files of, the, uh, of your idea. Uh, so you go home, sketch your invention, then make a model of it. Uh, so the same uh, principle um, can be applied to all creative thinking, not just to inventing new uh, products. Um, so thinking by analogy is, uh, uh, or analog uh, analogizing plays a key part in imaginative thinking. This is especially uh, when it comes to creative thinking. Nature suggests models and principles for the solutions of problems. Uh, there's no need to reinvent the principle of the will when it has already been discovered in order to be uh, uh, creative. And uh, when uh, uh, also uh, we need to make the strains familiar and the familiar strains, creative thinking often involves a leap in the dark. We are looking for something new. By definition, if it is really novel, neither you or anyone else will, will have that idea. Often you can get there in one job. And if you can hit upon an analogy of what the unknown idea may be like you have way there, and the reverse process, making the familiar strange is equally useful to the creative thinker. Familiarity breeds conformity because things, ideas, or people are familiar, we stop thinking about them. And familiarity reduces the greatness of thinker, Seneca said in the past. So the process of understanding anything or anyone and familiar, foreign and natural, what is not already known is best begun by relating by analogy to what we know already. Um, another thing is uh, widen your span of relevance. Therefore, it is not surprising that uh, inventors and other creative thinkers have knowledge in more than one field. Uh, they may even work in a quite different sphere from the one in which they make the names of discoverers or inventors. It's very true. Uh, so the lack of expert or specialized knowledge in a given field is, um, is not a bar to being able to make a creative contribution. Indeed, too much knowledge may be disadvantage. That's why uh, many say that uh, we need to learn in order to unlearn. And uh, a British aeronautical engineer who helped to develop the Concorde supersonic airliner and aircraft uh, failed his uh, matriculation examination at the age of 16. And he said, I knew nothing in a television interview, except how to think, how to grapple with the problem, and then go on grappling with it until uh, I have solved it. So when you are grappling with the problem, remember to widen your span of relevance. Look at the technologies available in fields other than your own, possibly in those that may appear to others to be so far removed as to be irrelevant. They may give you uh, a clue. So, uh, according to Edgar Allan Poe, experience has shown that the true philosophy will always show perhaps the larger portion of the truth arises from the seemingly irrelevant. So the transfer of technology from one field to another, usually with some degree of alteration or adaptation is one way in which you can make a creative contribution. You may be familiar with a body of knowledge or technical capability unknown to others in your field because you have worked in more than one uh, field, or it may be uh, come about as a result of your uh, trips to other countries. People with a narrow, narrow uh, span of relevance are thinking within the tram lines and boundaries of their own countries. So leap over the wall, develop a wide span of relevance and uh, try to... Um, Can you uh, wrap up, ma'am? Yes, 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 of course. Uh, the concluding, I want to say uh, some uh, uh, tips. Uh, you can start how to be creative. You can start with a morning free ride. We can take a creative courses, brainstorm while exercise. We can travel to other places. We can, we can join co-working space, connect with creative people, incorporate breaks into every work life and, and listen to music, of course, while we work. Um, engage with nature, get moving and connect. Uh, uh, with different kinds of people and of course meditation thank you very much for your attention thank you so much ma'am we will be connecting you very shortly after our special guest's speech can i please connect mr charles i am really sorry maybe your network connection 
we are not available i'm spotlighting you mr charles please uh, please uh, put on your camera thank you mr charles yeah uh, okay I'm so, I'm so sorry my device and technology failed me yeah and before connecting you i need to say i need to connect the world that after our dearest Daphne Suarez ma'am's speech after Lania, Rania Lampo ma'am's speech. I'm really overwhelmed with their wisdom, with their knowledge. Women, oh my goodness, is it women? Are they, are they human beings? I have enough doubt they are human beings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, indeed, indeed, indeed. They are superhuman beings. Of course. And if they are women, I would love to be women in all other life, in my next life, in, in the next 100 more lives. Really, really grand salute, our Daphne Soares, ma'am. Grand respect salute, huge appreciation for Rania Lampo, ma'am. I have no words. And please, my dearest world, see how women became like Daphne Soares, ma'am, like Rani Lampo, ma'am. When they speak, the whole world just stops and only listens to their <sighs> speech. Thank you so much. I will be connecting you very shortly. Uh, over to you, please, uh, my dearest leader, Charles, please do not misunderstand me. I was overjoyed. <laughs> <laughs> I also celebrate women because my mother was one and did a very fabulous job to raise me, raise me up. Thank you. Over to you. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, before my device decided to take an, uh, to take a French leave, <laughs> I <w> please <laughs> carry on now. I was on religion. You see, ma'am, uh, my talent was mentored by someone or some quotas that I've never met to date. Uh, that was uh, UNICEF. Came through. I saw an advert, went for the auditions, and it was taken in. They took care of my bills. Now, uh, when religion, religion, religious leaders come in and tells the young, talented people that uh, mentoring or pursuing your talent as a career is, uh, is evil and ungodly, it really broke my heart. So those are kind of the beliefs that we need to get, to get rid of. And... Uh, in our institutions, because most of these talents, we, we mentor them from the early ages and in our institutions. So that is that has been a heavy, huge stumbling block in uh, nurturing and mentoring those talents in those learning institutions. Again, when you, you see, when a teacher is motivated, he can do, he or she can do marvelous job. But uh, you find it that uh, they are told that you, your job is class, 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 class. And Tom, work without play makes Tom a very dull and ugly boy. So we believe that uh, at least you, you, when a child takes a break from theoretical aspects or approach in life and to get rid of the, we call, in arts, I call them extracollateral in your brain. You cannot keep on grasping everything. You need to get real to relieve your, your brain. So these are some of the challenges that we face whenever we go outside there to try to nurture talents. But me as Charles, I will not deter because that is what I've been doing for the last 10 years. Uh, another thing that I, I, I really like to emphasize on is this thing that arts is not a, a career. I, I've seen the likes of Ronaldo, Messi, doing great job and they're building mansions like our African own, our very own African, Samuel Eto'o and uh, Mane. They are really changing their countries, courtesy of their talents. And even the leaders at times or political leaders, they fail to give us the just basic needs like education, good, good medical health care, good roads. But someone with the talent goes outside there, you get sponsors and blah, blah, they come back and build us those things. So it is uh, quite unfortunate that our institutions are unable, courtesy of the, those beliefs, myths, religion, and maybe the government failure to put in 
the required infrastructures for them. Because there are some things that you can't do without infrastructures. You cannot play without a field. You cannot act without getting a good place. Though acting, we can do it even on top of the trees like monkeys, we do. Because we believe that, <laughs> we believe that uh, anything we do in life, even the way we eat, we act. Acting for us in the, field, in the performing arts industry, we are, we, we, we are at least better off because we can do it anywhere. We, we, we do. It's a matter of creativity, positive thinking, and creative thinking. In conclusion, talent management lies squarely on the hands of the parents, number one, because a child before coming to any institution, he or she must come, have come from a home. What do we feed our children? What do we feed our children when they approach life? When, how do we, what do we feed them? In, what, in, in lines with, the, with their talents. Are we telling them, even these talents you can get, uh, it can be a career, you can build your career through your talents. Then we come to the institutions. Teachers too plays a very major role, but teachers hands, especially in our country is tied. They're told class, 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 and class. But uh, I'll really like to add, and I'm really, I'm really still, I'm still working on that. And we are pushing to ensure that we tell parents, we educate parents. We, we, we don't want to force, but we educate parents. They need the good thing, the good examples of uh, the talents in those young boys and girls for their prosperity to live a happy life. Though there are some challenges too. Most of those people who came before us uh, broke the bridges because they don't trust us anymore. But we are trying to mend those because even Jesus came to save us. Still, he was killed, but we still believe that that is the right way to do. Thank you, and God bless you all, and thanks for your time. Superb. So uh, I want to ask a question to Rania Lampo, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, as you can see that our dearest honorable leader, Mr. Charles, has mentioned that uh, there is some issue that the school, academic institutions only focusing on class, class, and class. And they, and they are not really identifying the talents. How we can really develop this thing to identify talents of our students? Can you please explain in your short conversation, my dear Rania Lampo, ma'am, from Greece? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I have to say here that I am a STEM instructor. Uh, so what I'm trying to do is actually to infuse innovation in my classroom. And this uh, approach, this methodology aims at uh, actually exploring talents and hidden talents and capacities of our children in order to enable them, to empower them. And uh, uh, after exploring their uh, values and uh, strengths and weaknesses, uh, proceed with uh, innovative lesson plans. So what I'm trying to do is actually to promote um, hands-on activities, play-based learning, project-based learning, challenge-based learning, inquiry-based learning, all these new um, methodologies that are trying to uh, be focused on what we call uh, uh, learner-centered uh, process. Uh, not the teacher center process, because the learner is uh, uh, on the center, at the forefront, the student is at the forefront. Uh, so uh, what we should try to do is uh, teachers uh, should, of course, redesign the curriculum in some point. I mean that they should design challenging activities, taking into account, um, first of all, um, learning profiles, different learning profiles of students. Other students are auditorial and kinesthetic, others are visual. Uh, take into account other interests, their need, their, in, their age. Uh, so I think that um, uh, all around the world, hopefully, there has been a progress in this. I mean, uh, we're talking about the curriculum of the fourth industrial revolution. This in includes new patterns of, uh, uh, of, the of content, new patterns of collaboration, because we encourage collaborative learning. Students should not feel isolated. Students should develop uh, uh, their skills. Uh, neuroeducation tells us that our brain evolves when we are social, and evolves through interaction with others. So students, uh, when they interact, they can learn better. 
very important I mentioned before about emotion because uh, neuroeducation and neuroscience tells us that when we offer strong emotional stimuli to our students, information is absorbed easily and more easier uh, than this way uh, because uh, emotion and thoughts are interrelated, strongly interrelated, uh, and they shape each other. And uh, we need always to uh, adopt appropriate methodology. And uh, uh, what I said before, uh, I insist in practical ways, the theory uh, is over. Even in higher education now, uh, I think that um, uh, practical ways are the most important way in order to uh, attract, uh, uh, captivate uh, our students. This is uh, my opinion uh, that I'm trying to provide same vision all around uh, the world. And um, I also write uh, STEM projects, the national projects that are being implemented um, uh, now in Africa and Asia, and then uh, based on this philosophy. Uh, this okay. is my opinion. Okay, Daphne, ma'am, I want to ask you one question now. So please advise that uh, our mm -hmm. academic institution only focused on their just class, and you know that what our Charles Sar has said, that they are focused on bookish uh, academic curriculum. How we can help to develop our children's talents? That is the more important part. I'm connecting Daphne Suarez, ma'am, from Dubai. Can you please explain, ma'am, in your own way, how we can develop? Thank you, very nice question. It's by letting the child to share what's on their mind, what they would like to do, and being more observant on their talent. And uh, it's gone are the days when we had to become a doctor, a teacher, an engineer, right? If a child has a talent in art, what's wrong in encouraging that child to develop that art, the talent that is in them? It starts small and then it improves. So it's have a chat with the child, find out what they are interested in and do if they have the capability to do it. And if they do, definitely at a young age, if you nip it in the bud, when they are small, it can be very, uh, you know, they could end up with being great achievers in that area. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Actually, the awareness um, not created, I would say. So when the awareness um, is created, the child would excel. Daphne ma'am, I have just the real uh, reality scenario. I'm actually seeking your expert opinion as you deal with educators and also talented students. Mm -hmm. Our point is to nourish the talent of our students. Yes. So we seek your advice that how, how we can help them more. Because you know ma'am, in our regular curriculum, yes. they do not get focus what is their inner talent. Yes. So what you like to say on that, ma'am, that uh, how we can advise our educator and our schools so that they can really help our children to develop their real talents. I would say call in for people with talents in different areas and let them share their journey and the experience. Uh, what are the requirements for that? And because the, once they know what is the, really the requirements, what you need, what you ne have to do to reach that spot, then the first child can take the decision or even the leader, right? It's not mm -hmm. like for people, they don't know how do you become a business and leadership coach until I share with them. They don't, first of all, no one knows what a coach is. 98% are facing this problem. People think coaching is only for swimming or dancing. No, True. it's coaching or sports. Coaching mm -hmm. is very vast. So if you uh, give that exposure, like an artist says, oh, you know, art is not only drawing with a pencil and paper. You can become uh, maybe a makeup artist. You can draw on canvas. You can express your emotions and your feeling. And there is also something known as art therapy. Counselors use this mm -hmm. as an art therapy to help people come out and express themselves. And we are highly encouraged to do that with children because children express through art. True. So if someone speaks on these topics and shares the pros and the cons about it, I'm sure the, the more that you're exposed to it mm -hmm. by the Thank experts. You. Yeah. Thank you. Charles, sir. Uh, when I was yes. talking to one of your Kenyan schools teacher yesterday, last night, 
uh, even they do not yeah. know what is train the trainer program. So can you can you feel the <laughs> difficult? <laughs> Uh, come up again. So they actually, uh, I'm really sorry to let you know that uh, last night I was talking to one of, is Charles sir listening to me? Charles sir, during yes, yes, last, yes. my last night's conversation with one of our Kenyan teacher, they do not practice train the trainer program. That means teachers, yes. they do not go for advising the experts opinion or to train themselves okay they do not go for yes. that learning and uh, do you yeah. think it will be fine just to teaching the students with regular curriculum with only textbook what do you think we do not need that our teachers should get also training what do you think charles sir uh, uh it is uh it, it, okay it is a huge task so we do to go to come out of the books, but uh, you see the government policy is the one that's failing us, in a, especially in our country, because the, our government policy is all about books, 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 and books. The only yes. thing that they go outside to do is PE. Yeah. Is it that swimming is privately done, not even the government policies or curriculum. But uh, I would really urge it. Okay, the, the buck stops with the Ministry of Education in our country for that matter, because they bank, they, they come up with the, with all those curriculum and policies on a boardroom meeting. They don't involve our yes. teachers, especially our teachers are not are never involved. So whenever they come up with them, they force they they, they, they must be implemented. Yet the people, the implementers themselves, did not participate. So it is hard on, on side of the teachers to do anything because the, as I said, the, our teachers' hands are tied. But with the problems like these ones, we can share with them and we, 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 we seek the government consent to help them and help the learners and even the teachers. And another thing, finally, uh, lessons that our teachers have, uh, they have a lot to cover in the class. So giving them an outside or outdoor activity to, to be doing will be over. They will over. be overworking. And, yes, yes. Burden, they will be overworking. Burden. They will be overburdened and overworking and everything to do with that. So our teachers, I don't personally can't blame them. They told you the truth. I can't blame them. I blame the No, no, no. Makers. We are not just blaming. We are finding solutions. Uh -uh, uh -uh. Yeah, the solution is we try to incorporate the ministry to give that room because with the teachers, they follow the curriculum and everything strictly to the letter and time is not there for them. Uh, you find maybe a time they have only 30 minutes. Students only have 30 minutes to then they can go back for their uh, usual programs. So teachers... Not only for that, Charles, sir, I'm so sorry to interrupt. Uh, Rania Lampo, ma'am, you know that even pay scale is not higher for academic uh, teachers, you know very well, Rania Lampo, ma'am, and we need to help them as well if we can. What do you think, Rania Lampo, ma'am? Is uh, the pay scale is fine with teachers? Mm -hmm. Rania, ma'am, uh, what do you think? Mm -hmm. You mean about higher education? Uh, there, uh, there is scale of payment. The I will of course connect you because I will write in the text right now. So uh, I will uh, connect very shortly to Brigadier Vinod Dutta sir who has joined uh, just now. And uh, right at this moment, I want to connect Navin Toshniwal sir from India. Navin sir, are you here? Yeah, Munira, I would like to cover. Munira, you are there? Navin, sir, I, you are I muted. Would like to cover because I have got another, uh, you know, conference. Uh, sir, your your time your time uh, three thirty, right? Yeah, so it's three thirty here. Three thirty, your time or my time? 
no no 3:30 of course your time sorry sorry to say that so please okay i i will request you to cover shortly because uh, after that i need to connect our dear sir navin sir navin sir can uh, can you please give permission i i request your permission please you are muted sir yeah please go ahead it's okay i can wait for 15 minutes no problem okay okay i'm connecting brigadier vinod datta sir please uh, share your kind great speech brigadier vinod datta sir from india yeah i think vinod datta sir yeah yeah can yeah. you hear me yeah, yeah. Can please you... carry on kindly okay okay uh, good evening everyone i am uh, brigadier vinod datta and uh, i will be sharing uh, my views on uh, two very important aspects that is goal setting it is very important that we must understand that what is goal setting education unfortunately across the world and most of the countries reflection of the british era where lord macaulay had said that we are going to leave such an education system where the local education system or the native education system was totally done away with and they planted the british education system which was suitable to the colonial empire for which most of us have seen the footprints now if you see in our education system we are told to be obedient and let me tell you what is education education is not getting those certificates those degrees education is not getting those prestigious degrees certifications education is when you become a good human being education is when you have a right attitude education is when you have character education is when you have personality and that's why they say a person of good character is a person of courage in crisis situations that's what the education is all about we have been told that yes we must get good grades we should become like parrots we should mug up things and write it in the exam and put it across we are not told how to set goals we are told to achieve goals right from our kindergarten days till we become young professionals we are told that yes we must follow goals but we are not told how to set goals how to question those goals and what are goals goals are your dream the dreams which you have you know set for yourself or you have seen punctuated with timelines supported by substantial increase of your appetite to achieve them that is goal and once you achieve those goals in the timelines which you have set you are a successful person so what we have to tell the posterity to tell the children to tell the young professional that not only you should be able to achieve goals you should also be able to set goals to define goals for yourself and setting of goals is like pizza you know we all eat pizza what happens when the pizza comes it is not that you start gulping down the entire pizza it comes into beautiful triangular portions so the entire pizza is cut into portions you take out a chunk eat a morsel of it 
and start enjoying it. Similar is the story for setting goals. You must set precise and smaller goals, achieve them, and then graduate to bigger goals. In that pizza's case also, you will finish the entire pizza. You will enjoy the pizza. You will satiate your hunger. You have achieved everything, but you have done it in a timely and in an orderly fashion. So similarly, the goals should also be like that. Now, what we have to tell the young professionals or the posterity is that live your life. Live your life. You see, one great shire had said, I have not lived that much. You know, the amount of time I have died to earn this living. Ratan Tata, who's an industrialist. And let me also tell you what is the difference between a businessman and an industrialist. A businessman is a person who's only looking for profits. For him, the profiteering is Bible. But an industrialist is a person who generates wealth, who creates wealth, who's looking for betterment of the society. Ratan Tata is a very big industrialist, philanthropist of India, who says, live your life. Do what you want to do. Do what interests you. Because there is no point templating my template on your thinking, it will not reach you anywhere. So it is always better that we set goals at an early date. You must have seen those, you know, uh, uh, fire fries in the evening. Once you are, you know, sitting and having a, a dinner outside, they look very nice because they pop up a lot of uh, light. So once these fire fries, they settle down. And they decided, okay, let's set a goal. Since we can emanate a lot of light, they decided in a meeting and took a decision that we must change the sun. So let's not have such kind of goals in your life. Keep your tasks smaller and achievable. Everything in life is a reflection of choice. The moment you have made a choice, your right to retract to retrieve, to rethink, to redesign. Anything is only up to the time when you have opted from one of the choices which are available to you. The moment you have taken a decision, you have to go hell on leather for that. You can have no regrets. You can have no qualms. You should have no regrets that why you should not do it. Good, bad, indifferent, you have to achieve your goals. To achieve your goals, you should create artificial deadlines. Have friendship with deadlines. Because if you procrastinate, and that is the disease which is ailing the youngster, oh, we will do it. You know, as for the Parkinson's law, you, the time stretches. Where is the hurry? Why haste? but you will realize that you have so much of distractions, be it digital distraction, physical distraction, social distraction, that something or the other is going to pop up. It is like your cell phone. You may be seeing some messages in your group, then something pops up. You start drifting that side. You leave what you were seeing. So you have to be focused. You have to analyze that what you want in your life. Understand your personality. You must understand your personality. You must map your talent. You must harness your talent and then you must deploy your talent. There is no point me deciding that, yes, I want to do this because Abdul has decided that he will do it. 
I decide that I have to do this because John has decided that he will achieve this. Please understand what is your potential. What is your potential for growth in that particular sector? Then take a decision for yourself. Don't take a decision just because the others have succeeded in that particular life. There are no right and wrong way of doing things or achieving your goals. Everybody has got its own way of achieving a thing. If you want to uh, 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 reach a, a particular mall in Dhaka, there are four ways to reach. It is up to you which way you want to take, which way suits you, which way is closer to you. So please decide for yourself. What you have to do is you have to stand up. Most of the youngsters, they feel that yes, they live for society, they live for others. And let me tell you, nobody has got time. Nobody thinks people only speak well of you the day you die. And that day everybody will come, oh, so-and-so, he was a wonderful person. What a great personality was he. He always helped people. He never lived for himself. And the dead person also, you know, thinks that I died unnecessarily. You know, when people are speaking so high of me, I must, you know, get into the dead body again and rise. There are certain barriers in goal setting. Learn from people who criticize you. It is not necessary that anybody who criticizes you is your enemy or he's not your well-wisher. Take it as a positive and a constructive recommendations. You see, anybody who's telling you, who's giving you a positive stroke is basically to get you back on the track. Look for past as adventure or biography. Don't live in past. You know, this could have happened. Take it as a good or bad memories. Take it as an adventurous biography. I will wind up. I think I have got uh, ten, uh, three more minutes. Don't underestimate your talent. Don't underestimate your talent. Amitabh Bachchan, who's a legendary uh, film star in India, he was rejected because his, they said your voice is awful. Today, that voice is being worshipped. So what you have to decide is that, yes, understand. Don't underestimate yourself. Everyone has got problems. Do not get overwhelmed by the problems. Gulzar had said once, you know, he's a famous uh, uh, poet of India. He said that I only used to think that I am overwhelmed with problems. When I met people, everybody was a king as far as problems were concerned. So everybody has got problems. Individual glory is transient. Teamwork is overwhelming. When you decide for your goal setting, you must follow that. Have a proper discipline. Because once you have set a goal, go all out for it. Achieve it. Take it as a challenge. Because if you don't take it as a challenge, you will never achieve it. You see, failure is not opposite to success. Failure is when you refuse to get up when you're down. So get up, dust your instincts, and start afresh. Failure is reinforced way of attempting or going towards success. So goal setting is very, very important. It is like the GPS. If you don't set your you know, uh, your destination, how will you reach? So that is very, very important that you must reach your destination in time, set it correctly, have a mid-course correction, and enjoy the success of life. And achieve, you know, set achievable goals. Don't have too much lofty ideas. Yes, it is good to be ambitious. But it is certainly not good to be over ambitious.
थैंक यू जय हिंद थैंक यू वेरी मच thank you so much dearest honorable brigadier vinod datta i think that uh, my uh, honorable great leader ms rania lampo is quite happy whatever you have shared in terms of goal setting uh, she is of course happy i can see her smile and of course i will connect her on this and uh, before that please i request my dearest leader mr navin tashniwal from india please come on the hot seat to share your great topic that parenting and that train the trainer program navin toshniwal sir from india thank you good afternoon good evening good morning everyone this is navin toshniwal from jaipur city in india i will be sharing my knowledge on a very interesting and amazing science that is grapho analysis and grapho therapy how uh, we can actually read the character of a person fully through the strokes in the handwriting this is a very old science from the time of aristotle a very well known greek scholar he was the first person who detected a link between the mind and the handwriting he used to say that handwriting is actually mind writing and whatever is there in the mind it comes out through the hand and through the pen on the paper unfortunately the awareness about this science is not there in most parts of the world yes some countries in europe and in america uh, people or corporates are using this uh, grapho analysis technique to judge or read the character of a person before the interviews are conducted by them for placements so they get the handwritten application from candidates and they are able to assess the personality or character of a person even before the interviews are held so unfortunately the awareness about this is not so much but i hope people will come to know more about this in the near future now i will tell you what all can be analyzed through the handwriting it is everything related to your personality let me clarify it is not astrology i will not be predicting your past or your future through the handwriting strokes astrology is a totally different science we will be able to assess the personality and character of a person through the strokes for example how well defined your goals are uh, what how you will think or react in uh, in particular situations whether you are a fast grasper or you take time to understand something whether you want to learn new things curiosity for learning how determined you are how good your will power is and uh, uh, then whether you are sensitive whether you are creative and whether you are using your creativity to your full capacity then we can even see strokes of temper irritability and if we see a little bit more serious strokes even jealousy and greed can be detected through handwriting strokes and even strokes of depression can be seen in the handwriting so it's a very amazing science through which the entire personality of a person can be read in a very few minutes just by seeing the strokes of the handwriting now a very common query which people ask is that my handwriting is very bad how can you analyze it there is nothing good or bad in the physical look of the handwriting it is actually the strokes of the handwriting which determine the characteristics or personality of a person so no matter how illegible or how bad you think your handwriting is you might be having a very good character and a very good nature now uh, i will just show you briefly i have got some charts how actually we do the analysis of the character very briefly i'll tell you it's a big subject now these are some charts these are this is a right slant handwriting a straight handwriting and a left slant handwriting right slant handwriting shows a person who is expressive who will show emotions 
straight handwriting is a person who is composed who can meet emergencies with a calm mind a left slant handwriting is a person who is reserved they will and uh, you can say an introvert or reserved they will not share anything with anyone now these are different ways in which we can write m's and n's here there are pointed tops which indicate a sharp mind a person who has a very good immediate grasping ability if we find inverted v's like this in m's and n's this shows people who have curiosity for learning now rounded m's and n's this is the way we were taught to write in school this indicates people who are slow thinkers now there is nothing wrong in a slow thinker slow thinker is a person who takes time to understand and go into details before understanding very deeply about the subject so this person will go into details to understand something now here there are some upper strokes some places you will see loops loops like this indicate people who are sensitive this is a normal a normal o if you find a gap in the a or in the o like this this indicates people who are frank frank and friendly if you find loops in the o's like this small loop bigger loop and bigger loop this indicates people who are secretive they will not share they will not know what is going on in their mind bigger the loop more secretive the person is now here are some lower strokes a straight down stroke indicates a highly determined person a person with a strong determination a lower loop bigger the loop indicates person who are creative and a good imagination a uh, a half loop like this indicates people who are creative but they are not using their creativity fully lot of their talent is being wasted a small loop like this indicates people who are choosy choosy or selective a swing like this going ahead indicates people who have good initiative now the last chart i am showing these are various ways in which we can write t a t bar going to the top indicates people who are ambitious and a strong will power a t bar going in the air even above the t stem indicates people who are overthinkers they think too much and the but the practical effort to achieve their goals is not there a t bar going low indicates people who are lacking confidence in their own abilities they have self doubt in themselves a t bar going to right is short temper t bar going to the left is procrastination habit of keeping things pending a t bar joint like this t bar and t stem joint like this indicates people who are persistent they will not leave any work till they complete it now here you see the t bar is very very small you can hardly see it this indicates people who lack will power the will power may be less so this is the way we analyze the handwriting this has nothing to do with a good handwriting a bad handwriting and whether you write in a good mood or in a bad mood now another very common question which we get is like people ask me that if i change my signature can you help me to improve myself by changing a signature no that is not correct signature analysis practically has no meaning because signature has got only few letters maybe 8 or 10 letters how can you actually judge the personality of a person only through a few letters when we do the analysis we see the repetition of the strokes which are coming in the entire page of the handwriting the more number of times a particular stroke is repeated that is the more prominent trait in that person now i have talked about analysis till now now we are coming to the most amazing and important part that is the therapy suppose i analyze your character and i tell you that these are your characteristics and this is what you have in plus and these are your negative traits which you need to improve but then it doesn't help you in any way it is just making you realize and make you understand about what you have in your character and what can be improved further therapy is actually a science where we are making conscious efforts to change some strokes in our handwriting so that we are able to change ourselves for example i'll just show you the chart again a person having a stroke t bar going to the right this indicates short temper so if you want to get that person out of short temper just tell that person you cut the t fully that's it and another thing i want to stress these days we don't write the writing days have gone 
we are all on computer on text and we are all uh, on our laptops so there is nothing to get afraid or worry about the therapy which is given or required is only for 5 minutes a day you just have to take out 5 minutes a day and you have to practice just 5 minutes a day the relevant therapy which has been prescribed after your analysis and you will change in 3 weeks normally the 3 weeks is the ideal time in which you will be able to see the changes in yourself so uh, the therapy is actually a, a way of changing your strokes consciously whereby signals are being sent to the subconscious to actually change you so this is what grapho therapy is so i hope i have been able to convey some idea as to what grapho analysis and grapho therapy is and munira sir uh, munira ji if anyone has any queries uh, they are free to ask okay thank you so much uh, there is the honorable navin krishnival sir for your great speech and if they have question of course they can write here we have chat box here in zoom uh, i want to connect uh, miss idda kamau but before that uh my great leader rania lampo ma'am is here as you can see she has inaugurated our today's program and sarid ghosh sir from lucknow from india has written that very clearly explained mr navin toshnival sir and i will of course connect rania lampo ma'am uh for her advice let us please uh, listen from idda kamo ma'am from kenya idda kamo ma'am can you please deliver your great speech on your mentioned subject i'm i have spotlighted you thank you thank you so much uh, good morning good evening good uh, afternoon uh, all our viewers from all over the the globe yeah my name is edda kamau from kenya so greetings from kenya uh thank you so much dr munira and all the invited guests uh i am humbled uh, at this time and may i request your attention as i share my knowledge on goal setting uh to our students all over who are watching us uh on how they can uh prepare themselves on how they can cultivate their talent so that they can emerge as creative uh, geniuses so i'm not going to repeat what the the prior speaker has talked about on the same i'm going to just uh, mention on maybe some of the bits that uh, we missed out on so to all our students wherever we are uh, especially those who have already identified their talents uh i want to share with you some elements that you may consider when you are setting your goals a goal uh is a, a future or desired uh, result that you want to achieve at a specified time so i would urge all our students from wherever you listening to make a point of putting down your goals write down your goals place them in a place where you can easily see them strategic points in your house or in your school or a diary that you use every day so that what you have printed out or what you have written can be a frequent reminder that you set that goal and uh, i want to quote uh, gina green who once said that when we write down our goals we transform what we imagine into reality so when you put it down you will always forge towards achieving your goal so whatever talent you have whatever gift you have uh give me a minute dr munira excuse me excuse me students uh 
Uh, sorry for that. Sorry, I'm I'm back. Uh, yeah. So once you once you write down your your goal, you will be able to bring it into reality. The other thing is put down an action plan. Once you identify what you want to do, and then you set a goal, come up with an action plan, and make sure you follow your plan to the latter. How can you follow your plan? You need to ask yourself three questions. What is my goal? What do I want to achieve? And how will I achieve it? Once you set those questions, you will be able to make your plan in a way that you will be forging towards achieving that goal towards the specific timeline that you set for yourself. Then you need, as you're working on your action plan, you need to prioritize. Prioritize what you need to do first, the important things, work on them. Any distractors that come your way in uh, achieving your goals, put them aside and follow the work plan that you have set. Uh, the other thing that I would like to urge our learners who are watching us is to make it a habit to journal, put a journal on what you do every day. When you put a, a journal or when you record your achievements or your progress uh, every day or maybe fortnightly or maybe uh, monthly, you will be able to be setting aside some time to reflect on the achievements that you have made. When you practice reflection, then you will be able to ask yourself, how did I do this at this particular point? What did I miss out? And how can I make it better? So once you reflect on your actions or on your progress, then you will be able to improve on the areas that you have missed out. The other thing I would uh, recommend to our learners is to have a strong, make sure you have a strong support system, be it your teachers, be it your parents. If you are uh, lucky enough and you have a mentor or a coach or a role model, then you can look up to those people to give you support. Uh, a role model is uh, any person that motivates you, inspires you. Uh, at some point, you may be able to, the people may be within your reach. Your reach. For example, I can say Dr. Munira is my, is my role model. Dr. Rampiu is my role model. I can, because of technology these days, I can reach out to them. For those that we cannot reach out to, maybe we can read their, their books. We can listen to their videos or we can even tell people who know more about them to share with us their insights or what they did to achieve what they have achieved. So get a mentor, get a coach, get a role model. These are support system, people who can elevate you from one level to another until you achieve your goals. Uh, the other thing that I would uh, share with you is to uh, do not let any negative energy, what maybe critics are telling you. Uh, the earlier speaker has talked about critics. Yes, we have good critics, but we have those ones who are there to pull you down. So if you realize that someone is uh, exerting negative energy towards your progress, make sure you avoid those people at all costs. And again, using your support system, they can always help you. You can tell them this and this is happening. Then they will tell you or they will guide you on which uh, criticism you can take positively or the ones that you're supposed to let go and uh, you ignore them. Uh, the other thing is for every achievement that you make in your goal, whatever goal you have set, whether it is a, a, a small achievement, whether it is a great achievement, always reward yourself. 
pat yourself on your back, tell yourself that I have done it and I am going to do it even better. Encourage yourself, motivate yourself, keep yourself energized. And ultimately, you will achieve the goals that you will have set. So I want to conclude by um, echoing Cam Knight, who said that any time you set a goal, you put, it's like you're, you're, you're putting on a switch on your mind. And this switch uh, blows some light, which makes you to reach or to reach opportunities that you have never ever thought about in your life. And these opportunities, once you see them, you will strive to achieve them. Those opportunities are instrumental in supporting you to achieve your goals. So thank you so much. Keep focused, keep forging forward. You can make it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your great delivery, uh, my dearest Idda Kamau, my honorable leader, educator, intellectual from Kenya, who has already arranged Talent Hunt show from Lekud schools before we have broadcasted already. Dr. Kalpana Dixit from India wanted to share her ideas on some important issues. Dr. Kalpana, do you want to share now? Yeah, yeah, I have a spotlight with you. Yeah. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Here I would like to share my views on talent management as well as parenting, as well as education, because all the speakers have been highlighted all these issues. So, first of all, I will speak about the education. Education is not a privilege, it is a human right, it's a fundamental right. It is gives mm -hmm. you full opportunity for your uh, all the development. And uh, as far as talent management is concerned, they are, our talent management is our skill. How to identify, recruit, shape, and retain the talent. Here are many reasons why talents are not remaining in the industry, any industry, whether it is corporate or education sector, because the regions are over workload, job insecurity, role ambiguity, insufficient reward and recognition, insufficient resources and funding, and poor practices of management. So this is some of the causes of why, why talent is not retaining it at the institute. So how can we retain our talent in any organization? This is the base to retain talent in the institution. Like many education institution launched uh, developmental uh, program, faculty development scheme, and to shape the improvement career of, and personality of their employee, as well as their policies and procedures should be well yeah, back to faculties of the It should be and motivate the employee according to their performance. At least three week orientation program for the employee. So nowadays it is a very, very uh, restricted situation about the talent retention and turnover because in each and every industry they, are, they demand a skilled person and there are maybe job roles. And if a one person can perform each and every role, then they, they become a special, they would like to quit the job. So what we can do, at least we can orient them for three to four weeks and uh, uh, we can try to give them uh, some specialized leave, like, like maternity leave, holiday leave, and there are some provisions so that we can retain the talent. As well as we can also, uh, do the equal job opportunity to the uh, junior and senior itself. Sometimes uh, conflicts, conflicting situation at workplace also uh, encourage a good talent to migrate from the job or to turn from the job. So uh, equal opportunity is the major important aspect of uh, managing and retaining that talent. As well as we can say that uh, we should uh, start a proper communication, proper communication from top to bottom level. There must be a proper communication, uh, like uh, a, a continuous learning of opportunity to each and everyone, as well as salary skills, 
uh, revision uh, as well as compensation, very types of compensation incentives should be given to the uh, good talent and get a strategic view clearly of strength and weakness of workforce. If you are very good in one skill, so you can be allotted that particular job. If you are not skilled in that particular skill, so you are getting bored. So get a strategic view to assign the job role to each and every faculty. And the flexibility should be generated to accommodate and balancing the need of work and family. Happy family is the main cause of healthy workplace. If there are healthy workplace where people are fit mentally and physically, they will enjoy their family life itself. So this type of flexibility should be given to each and every employee, uh, like the facility of gym, like a nutritious food at the institution center, and uh, like some entertainment activities uh, must be there. As well as I, there are some good strategies to retain good talent in any organization. That is the right selection. If, if you want a mechanical engineer, you can't recruit an electronic engineer in spite of that. So right selection is the prime concern to retain the talent and to assign the job role. Uh, like this, uh, you can say, provide opportunity for proper development and growth because learning should be continuous for each and every job role. If you stop learning, you can't perform better. So uh, opportunity must be there and performance both based bonus. If a person or individual is performing very well or a skilled job in a particular task or project or program, so he, must, he or she must be given incentives and bonus itself. And then equitable and fair treatment. What type of treatment the success is to build a and the organization is the equal treatment to each and every employer employ according to their skill, knowledge, and understanding, and accountability. You must ensure the accountability. You can't say a higher officer to do a typing job, and you can't say a lower level clerk to do a leadership position job. So it is the accountability. Accountability must be maintained. And then uh, as far as the one of the topic of today's debate is the parenting. Yes, parenting is not a skill. What is parenting? Parenting is a vibe. Parenting is a learning experience that we can learn because there are many individual differences in child rearing and child bearing practices and our culture and our background of the family. So uh, parenting is not a skill. Guidance counseling, guidance counseling is also very important. This is also one of the topics. So how to guide a child? Guidance counseling is ensure a psychological aspect. If we apply some psychological application, psychological tools, the psychological tools, then we can guide the parent as well as the student. And uh, this, this is my uh, final budget to that. The education is a, a very important tool which can transfer the society, which can change the nation which can indeed, uh, transform the individual also. So each and every aspect of education, whether it is talent management, whether, whether it is creativity, whether this, this is identification of guidance stream for the parents and learning and retention of the knowledge and understanding of the child. Each and every one is a comprehensive, complex package. This is education. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, dearest Dr. Kalpana Dixit, ma'am, from India. Here we have uh, Dr. Sharit Ghosh, sir, from India, Dr. Sanjeev Kapoor, sir, from, Kapoor, sir, from India. Uh, so we welcome all of our dearest leaders, learned educators from all over the world. Sarit Ghosh, sir, do you want to share or add some value on parenting or educators train the trainer program or anything in your mind? Uh, good afternoon. Good evening to everybody. I'm sorry yes. I'm traveling, so I can't put on my camera. I'm Sarit Ghosh. I'm a principal of a CBSC school in Lucknow, India. And I have just stumbled on this webinar. And I was very much impressed by the talk by all my revered colleagues, particularly Naveen Toshniwal, sir, I could hear. Daphne, ma'am, I couldn't hear. I think it was over by the time I joined in. 
I have been in education for the last 28 years. And you know, we as educators have a lot of learning to do. Every day we learn new things. Like this graphology which has been introduced is something which I was not aware of at all. And uh, all my learned colleagues here have motivated me to learn more and more. And I want to thank Dr. Munira for giving us this platform so that we can learn so many things. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much to all my friends. Thank you so much, Dr. Sarit Ghosar from India. So now, here the time. Uh, well, please hold your breath. Dr. Dapli Suarez, ma'am, was uh, above the cloud today. The way she has explained, uh, Dr. Sarit Ghosar, you have missed so many things, I should say. And, uh, yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. I was in school. <laughs> I just came back. I will catch up with Daphne, ma'am, some other day. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, sure. So let me please connect my leader, my educator, my talented hero, and uh, one person whom I, I do not believe she is a lady. I do not believe she is a human being. I think she is a superhuman being for sure. She has inaugurated today's program. I'm talking about none other than Rani Alampo, ma'am. Rani Lampo, ma'am, I'm spotlighting you. Please deliver on today's topic. Seven topics were discussed, as you know, ma'am. And what is your final voice and how we can deliver more? And uh, please share your final lines that what you have in mind, ma'am. Thank you so much, Rani Lampo, ma'am. From Greece, connecting you. Mm -hmm. Well, before concluding, I would like to reply to your previous question about uh, the pale scale of teachers, because you know that uh, with uh, the beginning of the school year, thousands of teachers are busy lesson planning, uh, the supply buying. I, I worked with underprivileged children and I had to pay salary. And while uh, educating our youngest generation is a huge responsibility, Despite the fact that uh, this requires significant schooling, uh, training, uh, certification to become a teacher, the profession pays significantly less than other career paths requiring the same level of education. Uh, in Greece, for instance, uh, teachers are less paid than any other profession uh, in, in public sector. So some teachers are turning to alternative methods of making money on the side in order to make end meets. And recently also I read a poll, a survey, which said that teachers feel undervalued by their community. They think that their pay is unfair. Uh, they uh, mainly have considered leaving the profession. And also uh, teachers said that the majority, they didn't want their child to follow them into the profession. Uh, inadequate pay and uh, benefits. So uh, what we said be, uh, before, uh, I would like to conclude by saying that uh, academic institutions are unfortunately rigid all around the world still. Uh, we need to develop uh, new uh, skills, new norms, uh, flexibility, adaptability, resilience. We saw this during the COVID pandemic. And this is crucial when it comes to encouraging creativity. It's about fostering the ability to come up with different uh, solutions, unique ideas, encouraging students to continue on the journey to discover. Uh, discovery when uh, the first idea doesn't work, investigate alternatives, try and try again until uh, they succeed. So we need to uh, embrace creativity in the classroom, which is a great uh, way to challenge the notion of of static learning. We need to encourage students to think independently and problem solving autonomously. Uh, because this way uh, we, should, we will empower students to push the boundaries, question the norms, think outside the box and educators uh, uh, self their students. So I think that creativity has become a prerequisite for innovation and it is uh, an increasingly in demand skill for jobs of the future. So what we need to do, some uh, ways uh, that we uh, for mentioned before, create meaningful assignments that allow students to play with their strengths and um, capabilities, build a safe and open space when failure and mistake is embraced and celebrated. With creativity to every subject area, adapt activities and methods of learning to cater to individual students. So we need individualized differentiated uh, instruction. 
Embrace group projects, communication, communication are very important and uh, make use, of course, of technology. We have uh, a treasure of uh, free digital tools with educators that we need to leverage in order for students uh, to be more creative because we know that students are techno savvy, so um, their creativity is also expanded to digital domain. Uh, thank you uh, very much and I wish you all the best for this new project, uh, Global Classrooms. I think that's a very constructive uh, concept and uh, I believe that uh, it will have a great success. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, my Rania Lampo, ma'am, honorable ma'am, and uh, you have great, in a great way, you have explained, shared, and uh, blessed us. Uh, so, can I please listen from one of my favorite leader, just for a few minutes, uh, Dr. Daphne Suarez, I want to connect you, that how women can be a leader. Can you please share some, some guidelines, please? Daphne Soares, our yeah, favorite. Sure. Uh, a little bit change that question of how they can be because women are born with leadership qualities. Without a woman, life doesn't begin, right? So that is your first leadership quality. The second thing is that leading a family is not easy. And whatever we do as a mother or a sister, we are given that responsibility. So it's all in our blood, in our system, but then we only are restricting ourselves to the house. Gone are the days when women had to be in the house. You can do a lot. And it's all about equality. I think all of us promise, even at our marriage, that it's equality. It's not slavery. So when there's equality in a couple, even she's allowed to work and you know the expenses that are nowadays, besides what do the children need? They need a role model. Children are not going to be the way you and I were when we were small. We just did whatever. If our parents said black was white, we would say, okay, even if in our minds they say they've lost their mind, they can't see that black is not white. But today children will hit it on your, uh, clearly on you and say, are you blind? Can you not see that it's black? What's up with you, right? So children have to see a role model and there's no better person than a woman go stepping out to her success, doing what she loves because when she is happy, what can't a woman do? Name it. She is that beautiful carousel in, that can really change the world, be it a business, be it in the school, if she's a teacher, in the home, in a community, in a society, she can do it all. And we need to support women to really step out by just saying, because the father's never in the house. He only works and does his job. And besides that, his job is unpaid nine to five or maximum a few hours later, he sits down. Women's job is unpaid 24 seven. And yet we perform the best. So we need to be trusted. We need to be given a chance. And the more you trust in us, we can do much better manage home and manage work together. Superb, wonderful. A uh, hearts up to you. And uh, I don't know that Wonder Women to be called. Rania Lampu is, of course, Wonder Women. And Daphne Sword is for sure by many. She is already a blessed leader. Uh, Rania Lampu, ma'am, uh, please encourage us in one line that how we can follow you. How we can be energized like you. Rania Lampu, ma'am, what is the secret? <laughs> Well, really, I'm full of energy. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know how, but, uh, you know, I sleep only two hours. This is the truth, but I am um, full of energy. I don't know the secret, really. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. So, Dr. Kalpana Dixit, thanks a lot. Dr. Daphne Suarez, my honorable leader, Rania Lampo, ma'am, who has inaugurated, and our Dr. Sarit Ghoshsar, Navin Toshniwal sir, Saloni ma'am, Dr. Avimanyu Mishra who were there, our honorable speakers, all were from different countries. I really appreciate you a lot and I will be connecting Germany soon after 20 minutes, inshallah. So thanks a lot for this first round of Global Classroom that was inaugurated by Rania Lampo ma'am from Greece. I am over and over telling that is why, because my leaders learn from the ladies, learn 
from the victorious educators like Rania Lampo, ma'am, like Daphne Soares, ma'am, Dr. Kalpana Dixit, ma'am, because women, they are on the top and they are leading the show and they are empowering our educators. They are empowering our nations globally. And nowadays we still hear the screaming of many ladies. They feel they are weak. They feel they are not having such kind of power. They are not strong enough. They are not good enough. So many limiting beliefs are there. So we are hosting this program and projecting the super leaders of the world like Rania Lampo, ma'am, like Daphne Soares, ma'am, Dr. Kalpana Dixit, ma'am. I wish I could show my relatives that how to be a leading woman like them on this global chair. Can you see the world? how they became like a leader. They are managing home. They are managing global classroom. They are leading nations. They are advising everything. And we call it their women. No, they are absolutely more than men. What do they think, Navin Toshnival, sir? Navin, sir? You are absolutely right. You are absolutely right. It is not an easy thing to be a multi-purpose person. I fully agree with you. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. And when men like Navin Toshnival, sir, will be staying beside of us, we can do a lot more things which we couldn't do in our previous time. Thank you so much, Sarit Ghosh, sir. Navin Toshnival, sir, for helping us, for encouraging us, and Rania Lampo, ma'am. Women, please follow my leaders. Women, please be the voice like Daphne Suarez, ma'am. And the way Dr. Kalpana Dixit has projected her work in a beautifully brilliant way. Learn from the super genius. Thanks a lot, my leaders. I really appreciate your hard work and really seeking your blessing so that we can make some changes in our education and we can discover the real talents of our students. And we can really want to develop something in our educational system. We want to learn beyond the textbook and Graphotherapy, Navin Toshnival, sir, the way you have explained was marvelous. And we will be learning from you. Thank you so much. We'll be connecting you in a different platform in some other time shortly. Signing out from Dhaka, Bangladesh. Assalamu alaikum. This was your host of the show, Munira Sultana. Thanks a lot for joining Global Classroom. Take care. Stay blessed. Bye-bye.